My name is Susan Adamson. I'm a senior capstone student working on my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing at a university in Denver. I live in Grand Junction, Colorado, and I decided to take an online um, adult student course to achieve my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. I chose to do an online nursing program here in Grand Junction, Colorado, instead of the Denver side of it because I have children and at the time I worked full time. So I didn't have the opportunity to go to Denver, kind of uproot the whole entire family to potentially go to school. I needed my resources here that surrounded me um, for daycare, just for picking up for school, sports reasons. So I needed to stay here and so I chose an online school that would accommodate me and my family's needs. My mom and my dad both never uh, went to high school at all so they don't even have their general education diploma or anything like that. Um, my dad is currently homeless, so it's kind of um, rare just passing him by on the streets. I don't come from a family that is well educated or even highly, you know, thinks highly of education, so I had to step out of the box and say, I'm doing this for me, and um, it was difficult because I had to kind of pave my own, like pave my own path along the way and say, I don't know where to start for you know student loans or anything like that, so I had to just take a minute and and think what what can I do to make myself better without resources around me. I really had a hard time when I first started the nursing program dealing with my dad and him being homeless because my usual route led me right past a park that he would be standing at. It made my day start out really terrible, so I had to start saying what can I do to make this better. So as awful as it may seem, I just took a different route to school because I couldn't drive past him every day knowing that I was going you know, to a school and I was stopping to get Starbucks and I was doing all these things while he was just standing there on the corner. So I had to take a moment and say, okay, I know this is not the best thing I can do for him, but in this moment I have to take care of me and my mental health and I have to take an alternate route to get to class. I noticed that when I walk into a room and they see that I'm Hispanic, they automatically are kind of drawn to me. I don't speak Spanish and so I can't translate or do anything like that for them, but there is a connection. Um, some of the terminology that they use, I am able to kind of hone into it and realize, oh, they need this, um, or just the way that they, the mannerisms, the way that they move, that's very, kind of hits home. I see a lot of that at my house, so even though I can't speak the language or I you know, can't translate for them, I think there's a sense of warmth and comfort for them, just me being in the room two families that were on a medical floor. It was, and one was higher end and the other one was a Medicaid patient. And they used to give these bags away that um, the, pa the patients could take home and it had like diapers or just, just kind of stuff that they needed to get the process going for their new baby. And I had a nurse tell me that, oh, you know, we're not gonna give this extra bag to the Medicaid patient because they don't put it into society. We're gonna give this to the higher end society person because you know they pay taxes and they do all this stuff. Well, when it came down to it, they ended up giving the bag to the person who made more money and they didn't even take it in the end where the person that was on Medicaid or the family that could have really benefited from all of the products, they were left empty handed and they really needed that resource. And you know, it's hard to speak up as a student and say, why, why would you do that? You know, I did address it with my professors and they thought, well, we'll just, we'll make a contact to the hospital. But as a student in that position, it's hard to say, no, you know, that's, that's not right. You, you don't really want to push the boundary so much that you get a, a bad review or something in the end. I had a lot of different ways that I had to get myself motivated and um, different mechanisms, I guess you could say, to get me through the program. A lot of it was my study group. We would meet, um, sometimes we'd have to meet with all the kids, sometimes I would have to just take two or four hours out of my day, go book myself at the library, lock myself in a room so that I didn't have any other distractions. My daughter is a handful. She just, um, she always likes to see what I'm doing. And so one day I just gave her an assignment and I wanted her to go and learn the flow of the heart. So she went, she looked it up on YouTube and she came back and I've got a cute video of her explaining to me all the different blood flow of the heart and everything. And um, there's other times, I, there's three other boys, um, not currently, but I did have three other boys in the house and I had to just make them memorize cards with me because they wouldn't stop, you know, fighting and wrestling. And so I just had to put them to work and say, okay, this is what I'm doing. 
So you're going to see how hard it is. So once you guys get these memorized, then you can go play. And then they had to uh, stop and take a moment and say, wow, you know, this is really hard with all this commotion going on. Maybe we should go play outside or leave mom alone so she can actually do what she needs to do. So I just had to put them in the moment and say, okay, you're learning with me. We're all learning as a family.